Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Just a brief little message before we get into this episode with Tamara. There's a lot of exciting stuff going on. Tamara has a lot of really cool announcements to make with future opportunities to work with her or to receive services with her. But before we get into it, I do want to go ahead and just show you guys something really quickly for those of you who want to get a chart done by Tamara. She offers a discount for people who are on this channel. And if you go to her website, which this is down in the description box below, just a link to her, her website, um, you see these three little red boxes right here on the opening page. So the bottom two, Tamara Platform Member and Basic Reading Insight Session, are the boxes that you click for the discounted rate. Now, both of these options are readings with Tamara. With Tamara, one is more intense and more, uh, it's more in depth than the other. And that's the Tamara Platform Member. That's for 380 Australian dollars so that's pretty cheap for the americans and that's a two hour session with tomorrow where she goes into detail into your chart the basic reading insight session is only an hour i believe and it's a lot cheaper so she just gives you a basic overview of your chart so i wanted to make sure if you do want to do something like that with tomorrow and you want that discounted price you click either the Tamara platform member or the basic reading insight session. Again, the Tamara platform member is the more expensive one. It's the more thorough one. And the basic reading insight session is the faster one that's less expensive. So I hope that makes sense. Again, everything will be down in the description box below. All right, you guys, on with the show. Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is Ancient Wisdom Reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Happy new start to a new week. It is like five o'clock in the morning here in Atlanta, Georgia. It is late at night, Monday night over in Australia with the beautiful Tamara, who I feel like kind of shares this channel with me because you guys, I know you're going to be so surprised and so excited to see yet another video because we just dropped the December new video. All right, yeah. the same video. We just dropped that yeah. one. And so to get you get you twice in one week tomorrow, that's gonna be right. so great for the people watching right now to give them some hope and some um energy just to keep going because things are happening, aren't they? There's some wild they stuff going on right now. Are happening. They're happening big time. So something that I read um that came to my attention. And it was, they said, 40 million patriots worldwide. The patriots are in control. You know, we, we are in control, like 40, 40. They said 20 to 40, but you know me, let's go for the highest number. You know, like why go 20 to 40? Why even put 40 in there if 40 doesn't even count? So obviously it counts. Yeah, yeah. 40 million. Um, and also um, on WikiLeaks yesterday, um, he stated something big is coming. All the right people are scared. Okay. So all of the right people are scared. So all of the people that have been doing evil shit are scared. Yeah. And then he had very scared. And then it said it's showtime. Every lie will be revealed. 
So it's called Get Ready For It. And if you do not follow WikiLeaks on Telegram, he's going to be shutting it off very, very soon. So he's going to shut it. Yeah, he's shutting it down. He's only going to have the people that have that are actually following him and it's before all of this shutdown is going to be taking place. Yeah. Now, are you ready for this? Okay. It's not the Erica one. Uh, what am I doing? I'm doing that. I've got to go into the camera. Okay. Now, this came through. Um, it's the one before that. Okay, it is 4 a.m. and it starts with alert, alert, alert. At 4 a.m. this morning, 2,000 troops at Moody Air Force Base near Valdosta in Georgia. Valdosta, yeah. Yep, were called and told be at the base by 6 a.m., packed and ready to deploy. They were not, in capital letters, told the destination. They were, in capital letters, told, tell their immediate families to be prepped with water, candles, flashlights, batteries, food, etc., and be prepared to bunker down in their homes. Then there was a little, you know, tail end, and it said, publication of this information was intentionally delayed by me, the person who posted it, for 24 hours for the security of our troops. I just got chill bumps tomorrow. I'm going to show you guys um, for those. Let me see if I can pull up a map here. Oh. And then we've got standby update. It has been confirmed with 7,000 more troops on standby. Wow. Okay. So let me show you guys because do you know where Valdosta is? Valdosta, I drive through Valdosta a lot when. Hey, um, are you asking me? I wouldn't have a clue because I went, what? What, what, right? is it? what base? What base? What's GA? And then I had to Google what is Georgia? GA? What is Georgia? Yeah. So correct, check this. So Valdosta is right here, you guys. It's right on the uh, Georgia Florida border. So this is the Valdosta, right? Where I don't know if you can see my mouse circling. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. This, this is a very. It's by the the Okefenokee. I'll kind of zoom out a little bit more. So oh, and we go down here. Yeah. Yeah. So here I am in Atlanta. Valdosta is right here. Oh my and god, it's really close to you. Oh shit. Very close. Okay. It's like three hours away. Three three or four hours away, depending right. on. The and there are a lot of military bases, like from this this right here, this area where it says Georgia, that's called Macon, Georgia. It's where the band the Almond Brothers are from. People might know them, but coming down here, you have a lot of military bases. All this is I-75, the freeway, and you have a ton of military bases all wow. over this area. And this is farmland. Like this is like this is God's country. Like there's like not a lot of it's all military. So that just gave me ch like chill bumps because the significance of, I'll kind of zoom out a little bit more so you guys can see where it is in relationship to the rest of the United States. There's Washington, D.C. There's Valdosta. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gee, look at that. There's Cuba. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yes. So Valdosta, so you see here the um, the Gulf of Mexico. That's yep. like two hours maybe uh. to get into a cargo ship if they needed to take people down to Cuba. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Super easy. Well, something, something, something is going on because um, in Australia today. Now, when did I? When did we talk? We probably talked. I went and had something. I don't know. Anyway, so it was around about like lunchtime today. Okay. So, Erica, if people don't know Erica. Uh, Erica is my right arm. Erica coordinates my seminars. Like Erica is just amazing. Okay. And she's been with me for years and years and years and years and years. And she's a survivor of domestic violence. And so are her children. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I rang her today and I said, Oh my God, listen to, listen to this about this over in America. And she said, oh, my God. And I said, what? She said, Rose just called me from the Gold Coast 
And she said in the C17A Globemaster 3 has just circled around right outside of where she's staying in the sky and is headed up north. And I went, what's a C17A, <laughs> Erica? What's a, what's a Globemaster, Erica? <laughs> okay, so... The C-17A Globemaster III provides a logistics background for Australian Defence Force operations. It allows Australia to rapidly deploy troops, supplies, combat vehicles, heavy equipment and helicopters anywhere in the world. I just pulled up a picture so people can see. This is a major area. Uh -huh. It's a big one. Like, look at that. That's huge. Yep. So, so E, gorgeous E. Now she also sent me. So that's the picture. If you can see it, can you wow. see that? Yeah, that's, that's the picture of it in the sky. So Rose took a picture. He said, "Get out there and take a picture of it, Rose." <laughs> So Rose took the picture of it, right, as it's heading up up north, going up from the Gold Coast. So then E does all of the tracking of all of the planes. Yeah. She does that online, yeah. So she goes in to track it and it's not there. Yep. And I just have to say, did you notice the number on your phone of pictures, Tamara, when you put it in the camera? 11 of 11. Oh, you get out, get out. It was it was 11 of 11. I, I think you, if you guys missed that, go back and look at the footage when she held her can her phone up to the, the screen and it'll tell you like, you know, in our iPhones, like what picture number it is of the scroll and it said 11 of 11. Oh, uh, you know, but of course. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, so, so the fact, the fact that she couldn't, she could not trace it. It was nowhere on the radar screen. It, it was nowhere. You could, she couldn't find it. So, okay, guys. So what is this saying? This is saying things are happening behind the scenes. They're doing this and it's all in secret. It's all quiet, 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 quiet. So it's like, it's, it, it's soon. Do you know what I was thinking tomorrow? You're saying, said, this necklace here says, I am the storm. And I keep yeah. saying that when Trump said the storm is upon us and he said, you'll see. I truly believe because we are a planet of consent that they have been, they couldn't do anything until we were persistent with what we were willing to put up with. And yeah. I have to applaud the people of the world, not just America, not just Australia, for really buckling down and being very courageous and taking hits and saying yeah. no enough is enough and it, it kept at it and never backed down because i think that gave the energetic consent for stuff to start happening because yeah. we want it even happen. even those you, you like i say to people even those that people would say are asleep Aren't. are not they're it's not quiet. they are they're just getting something is not right and I was talking about the, the, the group consciousness and where we are at and because we've just been at it and at it and at it and at it, we have now got X amount of people who have all fully woken up. Now, when that happens, we immediately get what I talked about and I've talked about over, what, the last three years that we've been talking about the hundredth monkey. Yeah. This is what's happening, people. And therefore, yep, there they are again, the hairs, <laughs> yep, the hairs on their arms. So therefore, it's it's like what I, what I sort of said on the shows with Maria yesterday, and it was very interesting. If people want to go onto my rumble, and just check that we did part one and part two. Because as I said, people don't have enough time to sit and listen. If you do an hour, that's cool. Yeah. yeah? So we did two separate hour shows. And 
And what I was saying to what I was saying in that show to everybody was what I'm going to repeat now, which is no negative communication whatsoever. None. None. I don't want to know that this is what's going on in New Zealand, so therefore it's going to be happening here soon. It's like somebody sent that through to me. I said, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And I it's still me, right, going on. What have you sent me? And they go, oh, it's about such and such. Thought you may be interested. I already know that. Don't stop sending through this negative shit to me. Right? Yep. Because as soon as you open it and you start reading it, you're in that, you're in that energy and that energy is being taken in. And you know, and I was talking to, I think it was my daughter today, but I said to her, it's like this. We are hungry. We want food. Mm -hmm. So we're being served the food. We're in a restaurant. We're being served the food. And then we start eating it. And then we're starting to feel good. Prior to eating it, we weren't feeling all that good because we were hungry. If somebody went to put the food down in that restaurant and then went, oh, hold on a minute, and took it away and was not prepared to bring you any food, so you are sitting there and you are hungry and then you're getting to the point where you are starving, this is what us focusing on anything negative is their food. Yeah. We are dishing up food to them because they're hungry. But if we go, uh, 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 cancel, cancel, and replace it with the positive, they're getting the food, the food's being taken away. They're getting the food, the food's being taken away. They're getting the food, the food's being taken away. So the more we all focus in on the positive of everything that is growing, the hundreds monkey is going to happen. And what's happening? They're going to starve to death. Yes. Do you know it's so interesting? I don't know if I've ever told you this, Tamara. We both love Jessie Zaboder. And she told me a long time ago, and I've tried to say it a few times on the shows to tell people, she told me, and this makes perfect sense to me with what you're saying, that demonic energy low energy so the people of this world that are following that path they're in a very heavy low vibration they're not up in the higher vibration like people who are not that are following the path of god or light and so in order for them because we're in a, a nation or we're in a world of consent a, a planet of consent they have to bring us down to a very low vibration in yep. order to get in because they can't come in otherwise yep. And yep. so she told me at night, and I say this every night now, when I say my prayers or whatever you do at night, I say I revoke any permission that the darkness thinks it has to use my wounds against you. Yes. Yeah, I do that every night since you gave me that. Yep. Yeah. And that makes and what you're saying. It's it our mates. Yep. So that's why they put out. So like the, you know, we, um, I do with, with a lot of people, we talk about like the uh, controlled opposition or the Trojan horse. So what they'll do is they'll put people into this world to send, keep, keep, you know, once the truth comes out about the horrific stuff that's happening at first, it's necessary because it sparks that anger that sparks change. But then after yeah. a while, after a while, they just keep putting it out to keep you in that distraught. Yeah, in that, in that's it. That's right. And then also something um, that came through to, through to me that was fed through to me um, yesterday or the day before, it was like, right, be careful. All of you be careful because they are now desperate. Yes. They're going and they're going to be activating all of them that they've got on the truth of the so called truth of community. They're going to be activating them with information to take us away from yep. the truth because they're getting really, really desperate. Yeah, really they want to distract us. They put us in what's called the junk conspiracy cul-de-sac. So we go in circles why the real stuff's, yeah, you have to have discernment. Yep. Even within the truth of the world, you have to have a lot of discernment. Well, especially, especially now, because yep. they said this is what's going to be happening. You've been listening on certain platforms. So you've got to be really, really clear who you are listening to, trust your gut feelings, 
But if you are following anyone that's not of the true light or whatever, right, that's not of the God energy, um, then that's going to be your learning. That's going to be, that's going to be your learning. So everything is about learning, right? And then when, when it is, when it is disclosed and you find out things, don't give yourself a hard time, right? Please don't give yourself a hard time. Yeah. Because you just have to understand about the programming, how you're programmed, who you are attracted to and like, and, and why. And then you'll have that total discerning of it all. Right? It's going, yeah. So just be, but just be very, very aware. Now, what I've done is I've sent you through, um, I think there are two links okay. I've sent you through to put in onto this show. I've got to send you another one. I have to find it. Now, what are they? I watched three shows over this last week. And I was blown out of the water by all three of them. One of them was an Australia one. Uh, there's, there's Ricardo with SG and on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yep. And Graham, Graham, the cement, the cement guy, right? <laughs> Graham. Yeah. Guru. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Dave, Dave Graham. So. It's a show with them. And I sat and it went for an hour and a half. And like I was saying, I'm good with an hour. I can do an hour. Yeah. But give me any more than that. And I just go, I don't have time. Yeah. yeah? And as I said, like when we were all in lockdown, three three hours was nothing. Right. You know? right. And I would sit, I'd watch a Charlie Freak for three hours. Can right. I do it now? No. Yeah. So, um, but I sat and I watched that for an hour and a half and it blew me out of the water. It was oh, just it. phenomenal, okay? Then there is a one and it's to do with Gene D. Code and he's talking to Patriot, not sure what the what the guy is, but it's like he's lovely, really, really lovely guy. Um, so he was on, he had Gene on, and they were talking about the whole thing to do with Israel, the whole thing to do with all of the different Jews, all of the different groups, and which group is what. Fascinating. Now, Gene had been on with Nicholas Benyamin and done the same thing, but he just had Thanksgiving. Oh, by the way, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Thank you know, but here he was with Thanksgiving and he'd been eating, eating yeah. and drinking and partying. So he wasn't in such a good, you know. I get it. I get it. <laughs> you get it. You get it. Get right. It. Okay. So I just say, an eight, an eight is just an eight, right? So, but then he did it the next day and he did this, this with, and it was fascinating. Absolutely fascinating very practical very logical as he went through and explained it yeah right because i like that i like it when it's explained and it's very very right. simple yeah then fcbd code <laughs> my greek mate that i used to talk to on the phone when he first started and now you can't even get hold of him but he was on and he did a show with, um, with, oh, not sure. I think he's, I think his name may have been Dave as well, but the link will be coming through. Well, I have not laughed so much for so long. I was nearly, I was just cracking up. And you know, when somebody starts to laugh, and you hear them, right? So here he is on the show and he's doing it and he starts to laugh and he's giggling, right? And it's like, you can, you know, I thought, oh, sooner, you know, very soon he's going to be wiping tears away, you know, because he's laughing so much. But he did the whole thing, showed all of the footage of um, Carter's wife, Rosalind Carter's funeral. Yep. She's another Georgia y'all. That's it. That just I got chill bumps again because Jimmy Carter was the Georgia president, and they're not good people. Uh huh. I, and it is a crack up. I'm telling you. But at the funeral, 
there was everyone and I won't go into it because I don't want to spoil it because you guys, you just have to watch it. You just have to watch it. And here he is in the church and he's got the, and he goes, so look at this. Look at all these people, right? They're all dressed in black, okay? And here's the, here's the front row over here with all of the VIPs, you know, ex-presidents, whatever. And here's Melania and she's dressed in a light colour. So everything else is black, right? But get this, get this. Melania is sitting on the aisle. Next to her is uh, like Big Mike is next to her. Then next to her is Hillary, I think it's Hillary Clinton. Then Bill. And then down the row, like down the row is Jill Biden and Joe. Well, if Jill and Joe, if he was the president of the United States and she was the first lady, they would be up yeah. and seated in the aisle, yeah. right, where Trump and Melania were for um, Daddy uh, Bush. Yes, yeah. Daddy Bush. Okay. No, 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 no. They were like X amount of people down in the aisle, okay, and... <laughs> And then the preacher is doing what they're doing, what this, what they're saying, and the preacher is going, and you wonderful secret service people, how much you looked after her. You looked after her so much. You took her to do this. You took her to do that. You took her to do something else. You took her shopping for this and shopping for that, and you looked after her and you looked after her until she was ready to be to go to be home she was ready to be home and the and it turned around and pointed at the casket so it's like she's now where she belongs she's home where she belongs that is and so funny it is an fcb but you've got to get fcb you've got to see him because he is just cracking up and then they do a picture that was taken in the old people's home with Rosalind with the two carters and then they had superimposed Jill Biden here and Joe Biden here that look like like giants and there is there are the carters and they look like little puppets little hand puppets oh look I mean I was, isn't it it's hilarious it the darkness can't the darkness can't laugh at things they don't know how to laugh so isn't it fantastic that that's what i that's one thing i've loved about this one of the things i've loved is realizing how funny people are like how we can have such a serious situation and all these people can make you cry laughing with the ridiculousness of of the cabal basically like laughing at them to their face and I, know. I love the fact that melania who's been by the way the most beautiful of any of our first ladies hello and she's wearing a light color. She's Everybody wearing a black by her. And then Trump didn't go to the funeral because he didn't want to create a take the attention away from right. <laughs> uh Rosalind Rosalind Carter's funeral. And then all I'm gonna to say to you guys is one thing. Right? I'm not gonna tell you what to, I'm not gonna tell you anything. But I just want you to sit and sit right through the whole thing because what comes up is the train. But yes, and this is about people um, coming over the border on trains. Okay, but you know, you know, but it is you will fall on the floor with laughter with what the white hats have done on those to do with the carriages. I'm not going to go into it because I don't want to spoil it, but it's like that had me, right? And then that's when FCB was nearly, nearly crying with laughter. It was just, and he said, it's like, it's a, oh, I, I tell you, it was like hilarious, absolutely I'm, hilarious. I'm actually looking right now where she was buried um, and she is buried here. I was wondering, yeah, she is she is buried here in Georgia. Oh, and guess what? 
here's our number again. I'm going to show you. Look at this, guys. I, I think the number 11 is such a... So former First Lady Rosalind Carter was laid to rest following three days of tribute yesterday. Um, a private... Uh, she was buried in Plains, Georgia, the 11-acre property home, you guys. And we just saw the number 11 again Lay with Tamara. Lay so, um, I mean, 7-7, seven, 7-7. Seven, seven, seven. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you see there, 1961? Not, yeah, building built 1961, 17, 17, 17, 77 years together. Uh, the 39th, that's 11, 9, 10, 11, that's 11. I mean, I'll have to look up how far I am for, from Plains, Georgia, but um, oh, where, I, was the, where was the church? It was the um, let's see, uh, about it was a Baptist church on the on the family grounds. Oh, no, wait, she had a private funeral at the Baptist church, but was buried on the family grounds. So God. that's something I will say we do here in the South a lot, especially old Southern families. They have family yeah. cemeteries yeah. on their yeah. own. So I don't know if I could actually see her if it's a it's a private family cemetery. But yeah, um, yeah that's um, all those numbers, guys. I oh, will guys, really guys it's like I'm telling you. Those those three shows just like they just blew me out of the water, and I went if I if I was asked what should we look, what would you watch, what should we watch that one, that one, that one, and then if you're feeling a bit down, right, just put the one on with FCB, right, and just watch it again and just laugh again if you're feeling a bit down, if you're feeling a bit confused about the whole of the Jewish thing and Palestine and. Just watch the one with Gene Deco with Patriot. And then it's like, if you want to really get into stuff that's really, really practical, logical, here it is. And it's Bozy and it's F SG Anon. Yep, with that show. Do you know we have here in Atlanta, like not far from where I live, there's the Jimmy Carter Museum because he was from Georgia, a peanut, far a peanut farmer from Georgia. Well, we were in the sixth grade. So, what, like 12 years old, 11, 12 years old? Um, we had to go to the Carter Museum for a field trip. And we were told if we missed it, we would have to write all these essays like we needed to go. Well, one of my little friends in the sixth grade, I won't say his name, was not feeling well that morning. So his mother gave him a bunch of Pepto-Bismol. I don't know if parents still give Pepto-Bismol. It's pink. It's like a pink drink to settle your stomach. We got to the Jimmy Carter Museum and my little friend puked up. all over the wall. And it was pink. <laughs> And we got back in the van to go home, to go back to the school. And I, my our PE coach was one of our, our little teachers that took us. And he turned around and looked at my friend. And he said his name. I won't say his name. I was, well, not many people can say they threw up Pepto-Bismol at the Jimmy Carter Museum. And every time I think about Jimmy Carter, I just think of my friend just bleh, like projectile. Like, <laughs> oh, hilarious. So, yeah, guys. So things are, things are heating up. They are, and we we know that that Christmas has always been a um, an interesting date for the military back channel. Well, well, you know that you know that Trump just keeps on saying you're going to have a Christmas like you've never had a Christmas before, like yeah. along those lines. So you know, I'm just saying to people, just we're going to have a Christmas. Yeah. We're going to have a Christmas, yeah, and we just need to be, like, ready for it. Now, another thing, a whole lot of people have been sending me emails and messages over, like, especially over the last 12 months. Tamara, can we do Born to be Free online? No. Tamara, can we do it? Well, no, I don't do it online. Tamara, can we do, can we do the clearing work online? No. No, because it's like the way that it's done, it's got to be done in a certain way. Well, have a guess what? I've worked out how to do it. I knew it. I've been I've been thinking. I was like my sight, my spidey senses were like, she's gonna figure out a way to like get this. Because yeah. think about it this way tomorrow. Like that's another reason why I think they've they've made it. Because I know you and I are both a little bit more nervous to travel because of the. the we don't you know i know that that's a, it's a it's a concern for a lot of people right now and um and i think a part of that too is them keeping people who can help grounded in their home so you yeah i knew it was coming i just knew i knew you were gonna, yeah. you were gonna yeah. Yeah. i've worked out i've worked out a way to do it however it's like the prerequisite is that they have to have had people have had to have had a reading with me 
right? And, and they've, got to, they've got to send me their charts. And then, and then to prepare the subconscious mind, it's like there's the three emotional, emotional freedom, Hawaiian healing and self sabotage. That's got to be clear because that's what I do in the seminar. We start the seminar clearing with those three things so that that prepares the subconscious mind. And then I will be doing like some work with them to work out, okay, what is it? What is, what is the big thing? What is the biggest fear? What is the biggest negative belief? So actually clearing them because one, the thing that really pushed me was like a woman said, I'm, I'm carrying some very, very deep emotional trauma from the time I was a baby. Yeah. And I just went and, you know, and God just said to me or somebody just said to me, you know, I say that it's God, you know, that talks to me. Um, you have to you you have to work this out. You have to work this out, right? Because you know, people coming to Australia, it's like, no, you've got to be able to work with them in their own home. And then they have to have earphones that are noise, what do you call them? Noise noise uh, cancelling. Yeah. Yeah. Earphones on, right? So it's just me that's there, my voice, and I'm connected to their subconscious mind. And then we go, so I've worked out how to do it, okay? That's amazing. So those, yeah, so everyone over there, all who are listening that want to do that, like just send through an email, just send through an email. Yeah. I'll put all that, guys, all that stuff's going to be in the in the description box below. That's amazing. So I, I want to reiterate to that because I know as as in, in my work, line of work as well, so you're, you're going to have to basically in order to do this online, you're going to have to meet tomorrow halfway and prep yourself and make sure that you're ready you know, as you were saying that tomorrow, I was thinking about like, you know, being in a city it might not be the best place to be to to do uh, this. Uh, no, it's fine. No, being in a city is fine. Just make sure um, you've got the sounds removed. From yeah, yeah you've, got to, you've got to remove all the sounds. So if you have the, the headsets, it's like that'll be fine. And then there will be the document like I have it born to be free that people have to sign. So, you know, like that they are and if they are, if they are under any sort of like medical care, um, that they have to actually take this to their doctor, whoever it is that's looking after them, um, and like, am I fit to actually do this? And then I'm happy to talk to, you know, to their doctor um, as well to explain to them exactly how this is done. Yeah, but it's like I was talking, I had um, I had the seminar the other day and we had the I had the list of one of the girls and... Um, have you got a, have you got a minute for me just to go and get it? Yeah, so absolutely. That people, people will have an idea. Absolutely. Oh. While you're pulling that up, I'll show people your website so they can see. Let me pull it up here. All right, you guys. So if you're not familiar with Tamara's website, I'm, I always have it in the description box below. Um, it's a fantastic website. She's got a lot of information on here for all her different uh, services that she offers um, for you guys. And so um, so you'll be able to find my computer's being very slow this morning, so it will pop up faster on your computer. It is 5.46 a.m., so computer's just waking up. But, um, yeah, you can you can come on here and look at all this stuff and look at what, what you – and if you want to talk to Tamara – She'll have her contact information here on her website. She's also got like all her different social media platforms. Uh, here you go, right here. You see, super easy. You can um, email, uh, contact. That's the address right here, you guys. So, um, so you can ask her any questions that you need to ask. And I think that's. I I tell you guys, I was like waiting for her to do something online. Okay, so I'm just going to cover this over. But this is to give you an example of how I work with people in regard to, and this is clearing people, right? This is clearing of a person. So um, this is a close friend of mine, and this is to do with her mum, okay? Now, it's like this person is in her 50s. So she has carried this, right? And, I mean, she's done born to be free and stuff, Okay. But this is specific to a person. And this is what I'll do if we've got like an ex-husband or an ex-wife or we've got problems with the mother-in-law or we've got, you know, like problems with the mum that you've carried through. So this is a mum 
And what I actually got as I was going through and doing all of this, I just said to her, oh, my God. She goes, what I said, you were not wanted. You weren't wanted. Right? And she, yeah, and she, that was as soon as she was conceived, yeah, she knew that it's like the mother didn't want her. So the other children have had the attention and here has been this beautiful girl. She's the most amazing, amazing girl. So, and I do on a, um, a, a coding and I go, right, okay, so we're going to go through and I want all of the negative emotions that you actually feel toward this person, okay, that you're carrying in here, okay? And, and I go, and I don't care how bad it is. I don't care, you know, just I want them all. So anger, frustration, resentment, disappointment, disbelief, hurt, bewildered, fearful, not good enough, criticized, unloved, controlled, guilty, not wanted, discarded, disempowered, anxiety, manipulated, hate and rejection. All right? And then I went, right, okay, is that it? She goes, yeah, I said, you sure? <laughs> she said, yeah. I said, let me just go through them, okay? So I go through. I said, there's nothing else? There's nothing else in here? She goes, no, that's it. I said, great. Now, on a, on a scale of zero to ten, zero means it's gone, ten, it's bigger than Texas, I want you to give me the number that comes to you, right, for each of these negatives, all right, so anger was nine, frustration was nine, resentment was 10, disappointment was 10. So we worked our way down, okay? So then I go, right, so I what I want from you now is this is what you're carrying. What do you want to feel? So then we go through all of that. So then I go in and I do the clearing from the time of conception up until life today. And I clear each of those, okay, each of those negatives, right? And all because as soon as you have one scene that has that negative emotion attached to it, then what's going to happen, you're going to have the gestalt happening. So there, therefore it just gets fed all the way through. So just imagine from the time of conception and as a little girl and you've got all of these negatives and you've carried them and the mother has reinforced them because of the way that she's treated the child all the way through the child's life. So then we go, okay, cool. So then we do do whatever, okay, so we do that. And then I've, I send them for a walk. They've got to walk up the street and back because they've got to integrate yeah? yeah, and they've got to get into the yeah. So then I go right, okay. So now, now, uh, you know, mum's standing in front of you right now. Yeah, okay. So give me the number, the number that you've got for anger. What number would you give to anger right now? So she went from nine to one. Frustration was nine, zero. It's gone. Resentment ten. What is it now? One. Disappointment was 10. What's it now? Two. Okay. No. Hold on a minute. Yep. No. Zero. It's gone. Disbelief. Nine. What's it now? Gone. Hurt was nine. What's it now? One. So, you know, and we've, and it's like zero, 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 zero. I mean, you can see like all of the zeros that are down here. Uh, zero, 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 zero. That's and how long did she? How long did she spend with me? Three hours. Three hours, when, and it's gone. When you said disbelief, I think as you're saying this, I want people to. I think what happens, like especially with parent relationships, and you're so right, Tamara, because there's so much. I think we carry against our parents that we're not totally aware. It's not con we're not consciously aware of it. Yes. I think a lot of that comes from that, like that, the shock when, when your parents betray you in some way, there's yes. a shock there that I think puts us in like a free state that yes. is replaying 
the shock and we're not even aware of it half the time. And so that's, a, right. that's unbelievable. That's, that's, that's amazing. You know, and that's, right. so that's, so that's, that's the work. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's the work to do with like one-on-one -on -one, to do with, you know, that person. And this is what I do for people that have been, this is what I do for kids that have been sick. Yeah. It's like we go through and I go, yeah, you got these little feelings in your tummy. Yeah. It's like, so what's that feeling? You know, like what, what is that? You know, what does that feel? You know, and then they give me, you, they give me and I go, so, you know, if we can get rid of that. How do you want to feel? And then we just, we just do the work. And then when at the end of the work, but then I also with children, I work with the Lucia color test, but I have to actually have them here with me, uh, to do that. So I don't need to know what's going on with the child. I just do that, you know, with the Lucia test. And that gives me the information of exactly what's going on with the child. Is, it I mean, will, I was thinking of, fascinating. I was thinking about because you know, even adults who yeah. are assaulted as children, you might not remember because sometimes the brain will block them. Oh, well. but oh, the now body, that's, that's the thing. The body yeah, remembers. That, that's another thing that happens, yeah, because like, and Jessie has, um, she's covered this before, and it's how children go into amnesia. Yeah. You know, they just, yeah. And so what happens is that we get, I get the adults into Born to be Free and they're there and they're doing the clearing work and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, my God. And then they come up to me after the, after doing the clearings or, or, you know, a clearing and they'll just go, oh, my God. And I go, what? They go, you know, and then a lot of people will go, oh, that's your imagination. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's your imagination because if that actually happened to you, you would remember. And I go no, because when a child is traumatized, they disassociate. Yeah, they just disassociate from from the trauma. But even you know, like adults do it as well. If yeah, they get that, they will just do that that disassociation from it. Yeah. It's what keeps you alive. So that disassociation is what's keeping you alive in that moment mm -hmm. instead of succumbing to the, uh, the the trauma of what's happening to you. And I will, I was looking, I have my, the book. Oh, here it is. Have you ever read this book, Tamara? It's a heavy book. It's like for, for people who are still a little bit confused about the body holding memory. Ah. Oh, the body keeps the score. I'd yes. love that. It's, it's an it's a, it's a it's a very scientific book about what happens um pioneering research our understanding and trauma and offers a bold new uh paradigm for healing so this yeah. guy goes through like really intense so i warn you guys he does go through really intense traumas that he's worked with with patients psychiatrists and how the body will always keep the score and so sometimes like i tell my students in yoga like you know, when we talk about the yoga chitta vritti naroda has so vritti or thoughts, sometimes thoughts are just pure emotion and you don't know where it's coming from. And it could be that there are, there was a disassociation that happened, but the body is trying to keep you. It's a, the fact that the body holds it. You have compassion with yourself because it's your body trying to keep you alive, right? It's your body doing what it can to keep you alive. And I will, I said this, I'll be a little bit, uh, more open what what tomorrow is talking about um i i have a lot of missing memories from high school i remember middle school but i don't I have a lot of missing memories from high school and there was a time when uh, my uterus fell out when i was in high school and they had it happens for kids who are being sexually assaulted um and they had to pop it back in and there was two times with a doctor where the doctor said to my mom i think your child's being abused and my mother said no 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 that's not possible now, I have very vague memories and missing memories, but I obviously my body was communicating that there was something going on. Yes, and yes. and that has definitely, you know, sometimes I feel like our personalities, we have our natural personality that's pretty, you know, ingrained in us, but they're also kind of twerks or tweaks that happen to our personality because of trauma. And when you start to realize that, that there are parts of you that aren't authentically you because of what you've been through, whether you remember or not, your beautiful, yeah. lovely body does, and that's why it's trying to keep you alive. And it's so freeing once you can release that weight, even if you don't know what that weight is. If you yes. can release it yes. Um, yes. and tell your body you're fine. Yeah, yeah, and another thing that I do is that if people have got uh, illness yeah. and I go, 
well, you weren't born with it, so um, do you want to do you want to go on a journey yeah. and, and back to when you when your subconscious mind decided to create the illness in the first place? Yeah, right. And they go like, oh my god, yes. So then we just go back, and it's like there it is. You know, and then I just do all of the clearing all around that and then take them back to when they they had a 100% perfect body. Every cell throughout the whole of their bodies were 100% perfect. Um, and then bring them through, you know, to now. And then it's like, then have a guess what? They don't need the illness anymore because right. the trauma, the, the reason why the, the body decided to create the illness was because it's going, I can't handle this. So what I'm going to do, and that's a subconscious, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to throw this out onto the body. Yeah. So it throws it out and then the body creates the illness. So if we can get in and heal all of that, then have a guess what? It doesn't need the the um, the illness anymore. And when I'm going and when I'm working with people who have got um, addictions, right, that's really, really interesting because I just say, don't put them into, don't put them into rehab. Right, you've got to you've got to do this work first, you know. And the kids would always say to me, "Take away my pain, and I'll no longer have to do the drug to kill it." So it's the same. Take away my pain, I won't need the alcohol. Take away my pain, I won't need to be an emotional eater. Take away my my pain, I won't need to do the drug. Yeah. So it's like that's that's where it's coming from. And then as soon as I work with them and we get rid of the pain. So that they don't have to kill it anymore to do the drugs, then I put them into rehab. Then off you go and you get detoxed. Yeah. It's easy. And then have a guess what? They don't use the drugs. The drugs are gone. The alcohol's gone. The food, gone. Eating disorder, gone. Yeah, it's all common. That, that's that's um I, I I I hope more and more, I think more and more people, especially who watch this channel, um, under are starting to understand more like everything we do is what we call karma, which is just cause and effect. So everything mm -hmm. you do is the cause or is the cause of some effect. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, you're right. It's so funny, Mara. I have a, tomorrow, I have an episode on Wednesday dropping about Mara Murray, where I, t I talk about eating disorders, especially with an athletes and how many, many, many athletes have eating disorders. And it's coming like everybody who starves themselves, um, is doing it for a sense of control, but it's coming from a different trauma that caused that need to control right, right. Yeah. you know to, to, to and, and that's because they're trying to create a happiness you know yes. and so it's it's you know binge eating starving yourself doing drugs over shopping this is all coming from something that's trying to bring that in, endorphin high in order yes. to to feel okay within yourself yes. um, yeah you know? and i have got a recording i was going to say to um about and then I might do something about it um, because it's just I've just got it like on a on a disc, um, but it's like it's how to stop emotional shopping. But your emotional shopping is the same as like you, you with your food with whatever. It's like you've got a big black hole inside of you. Yeah. So what you're doing is that you're trying to fill it. So if you don't get enough love uh, from your parents when you're a child, um, and what you're given is food. So it's like, so you've got this big black hole and then all you're doing is just eating. So whenever you're unhappy emotionally, you're going to eat because that's how you've been programmed. Yeah, so it's about healing that that big black hole and people that have got the um, uh, emotional eaters, you know, the CD that they listen to, it's about like filling that hole. It's like, you know, so that they don't have to do the food anymore. Like it's like it's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating, and I just thank God every day that He's chosen me to do this work. It's just like it just blows me out of the water. And I was sort of saying to somebody the other day, they go, you know, um, how do you keep yourself like connected, like to God all the time? And you know, and I just I started to laugh, and I go, well, I pray, and they go, yeah, and I said, but I sing a song when I'm in the car. And they go, oh, okay. And I said, so whenever you think that, you know, whenever you're going into a little bit of a negative or you're not quite sure about things, I said, it's from um, Sister Act, Act with Whoopi Goldberg. And it's it's called, you know, nothing, nothing you can say can tear me away from, not my guy, but my God, right? 
I'm sticking to my God, my God like a stamp to a letter. Like birds of a feather, we stick together. I love it. I love that that movie, okay. actually. It's you great. Can't, you, know, you can't take me away from my God. Yeah. And I thought, I thought, I want to say, I want to share that on the show with Bryce because, you know, this friend of mine just laughed, just laughed. And she said, you know, you're so funny. And I go, well, there's, there's ways that said God has humor. Oh, absolutely. You know, God has humor, you know. And I said, so I pray and I do that. But I said, I love that song. And, you know, and I think, you know, and, you know, like, I love him, I love him, I love him. And where he goes, I follow, I follow, I follow, yeah. I yeah. will love, I, you know, yeah. I will follow him, <laughs> follow him wherever he may go. That's it, <laughs> okay. Yeah. There is an, an ocean too deep, <laughs> a mountain so high they can keep keep me away. Right. Yeah. And it's I, like, yeah, and you just bring that that's God. You bring God into that and it brings this happiness. It's like and you just laugh. You know, yes. you just have to laugh. Yeah. It's it's so isn't it? Because I, I always think you know, like I think the more you die, because we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We're not humans having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings yeah. having a human experience. And yeah. so I think that's that. You know, I think people have this perception from religion that that to have that relationship with God has to be so formal. And so, like, I sit down and I pray now, but I feel like I'm constantly talking to God, like, all day. I feel like I'm constantly yeah. just, like, there's nothing yeah. formal about it, you know? It's it's not a formality. It's, it's it's um, and, um, you know, and it's in, when you really dive into yourself and your own self-healing and you go into that spiritual world, you see life so differently. It's a totally different perspective on, on life, and you don't see God as a vengeful, wrathful being, but a loving energy source that is coaxing you to realize how magnificent you actually are. Uh, but you know what? It's like I'm, you know, that really like sad, it really, really saddens me is like how are all of the Catholics going to deal with all of this that's going to be exposed? I mean, you know, for, like for everybody, it's going yeah. to be absolutely horrific, but the Catholics, oh, my well, God. And they're I doing. Said, I said to my daughter, I said, just as well, your dad and all of his family are dead. I yeah. said, because I'm telling you now. I said they would. I, 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 you know, they would probably commit. They would just be just so devastated because out of all of the churches that I've been like and people that I've known and been associated with, it's like that Catholic church and what they the indoctrination is just like horrible. It's unbelievable. unbelievable. Well, and I will say, my so my sisters, we most down here in the south. Most of us are Protestant, but my sister is married to an, and a guy whose family is Italian Catholic, and his mother, his his dad is Methodist. His mom's Italian Catholic, but they grew up Italian Catholic. And um, his grandmother, who is no longer living, Mamouch, she was like in her ninety, like mid nineties, when all of this stuff started coming out, and my brother-in-law's mother and my sister would talk a lot. And should we tell Mamooch about the Pope? Should we, and my sister asked me that once. She's like, what should we do? And I was like, she's 94 years old. She's a good person. She's a loving, loving, amazing person who has a great relationship with God. Don't tell, don't her. tell her. Don't no. tell her. No. Don't do she that. For find, her. She will find out when she passes over. Well, she has passed over now. And I was like, you That's know, nice. I said, she yep. raised her, she did not raise her. She raised kids that loved God, that, you know, are good people. Their her grandchildren are good, good people. She was in it. Yep. I mean, the Italians cracked me up with her great grandchildren, with my nephew and niece and the other cousins from my brother in law's siblings. Before the baby could even like technically eat food, she was giving them ravioli to suck on. You oh, know, I, <laughs> I know because I've dated, I've dated Italians. I tend to date italians and greeks and you know it's like i just mediterranean men i mean like hello you know like i'm sorry but you know beautiful <laughs> and i just say to people you know i go like i'm half spanish what do you expect um <laughs> but like but they're mothers all the time you eat you yeah. eat you eat you know look at you 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 too you too tiny you know you yeah. don't have any meat on your bones you know it was so funny it's so a, funny 
Yeah. Well, I will say for those who are have people who are questioning even like the the antics of the church, there are two great documentaries that have just been released here in the United States called One Was Shiny Happy People and One Is Let Us Pray. And it gets into kind of what's going on with these churches. Um, it's it's a great uh, introduction for people who are just now because that's the thing too. I think when people are just starting to figure out something isn't right, you don't want to hit them with like. Yeah the big stuff right away. You want to just kind of talk to them in a very practical way about, you know, just some shady stuff that's going on and let them kind of peel the layer. Cause I think we, we got the opportunity to peel the layers back slowly, you know, we were were really lucky. And the thing is when I'm, when I'm with people, I've got the first, gee, it was amazing. When I saw that it was Charlie Freak with Mark Devlin and Mark Devlin is from London And Charlie Freak was down in Mexico on his, you know, on his property. Um, And it was um, the fall of the cabal A to Z. Yeah. And they actually had the footage of Trump. And here's the picture of him here. And here is the picture of him here. And then he went to here. And then he went to here. That was amazing. That was the most amazing, amazing video for me, show for me to actually experience. And I've kept it. He actually found it for me because I said to E, I can't find it anywhere. We so, showed it so to our parents. We went, in, we went in search of and we actually found the original one. Yeah. Because they had the original one and then they did some editing on it and added something else in. And I kept on going, no, that's not the one. No, it's not the one. It's not the one. I know the one. And it's like, and it starts and it's like something's falling out of like um, like a building out of a, like out of a tall building, like a flag or something or, you know. Anyway, so whatever. So there we are. So we have done an hour. I know. We've this, done it an flies hour. by. It flies by, doesn't it? it? It does, yes. You know, and I'm keeping my promise to people. I'm only keeping it to an hour. Okay, so if you people want more, let Bryce know, and then then we'll come back and we'll do another hour. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. All absolutely. right. So, you know, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? That's before? it. I think people just, you know, I know it takes a lot of courage to do what everybody has done. Um, who's watching me right now? Even if you don't have a public profile, even if you're a silent protester. The fact that you're you're aware and you're persistent in your awareness and you're not capitulating to the the darkness is is what's changing stuff, you know. And so just keep it up and know that you're not alone. And I think that so many more people are silent like you are. That and I will say this again, you guys. I it was so reassuring when I found out because we get so inundated with with media on the. But when I found out, seventy two percent of Americans had declined the vax had declined the. And then I saw that video of Bill Gates having a temper tantrum because of that. I knew we were heading in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a Do you have a copy of that video of him? I'll see know? if I can find it. I, I had it on my Instagram at one point, but I don't know if it. I'll I'll see if I, I'll look for it. But you guys, if you guys know the video I'm talking about too, send it to me and tomorrow as well. But I'm going to look for it as well um, because it's hysterical. He is having. I mean, it is. His st- actually, it might be on DC Drano's Instagram. I will go look on his Instagram page and see if I can find it and send it to you. It is laughable to see him like having a freaking temper tantrum because we didn't fall for it. Yeah, and they didn't count on that. And I, so- I mean, I look. I'm just. I'm loving all of this. I'm just loving all of this. You know, and I just say we all deserve to give ourselves a medal. We all deserve to give ourselves a medal because it's like no matter what they've they've shoved at us, it's like we have just continued on and it's like and we're not giving up. We are not giving up. No way. Nope. That's actually that there's one there's a few verses from the Bible that I really, really like, and that's a good one to end on tomorrow because there's a there's a verse in the book of Esther that says, Perhaps you were born. For such a time as this. And that's it. Yeah. Love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye, Bye everybody.